Flicko. Josh99 said, hey Kenny, I saw an old video about your vocal chain. You keep using Waves plugins. Can you explain your 2022 vocal chain? Thank you. All right, it's actually a little different. That's a good question, because I have changed it up. This is my current vocal chain. I use the beat on top, as I always have. I put an MP3 or a two track wave of whatever beat or whatever instrumental I'm recording vocals to. I put that right here on this top track. All right, so I put the beat on the top track. Easy enough. Whatever the two track is, whatever the wave is, put it on the top track. I record on two tracks at once, which means this is the track that you're hearing. So that one's monitoring on in, and I'll let whoever's recording hear themselves there. But you're also going to record on this latency track. So every time you track something, you're going to be recording on two tracks every single time. This is an Ableton thing. The reason we're doing this is because even whenever you fix your buffer rate, even whenever you're using really low latency plugins, even whenever you go fix that delay compensation thing in the preferences, there's a little bit of latency that can happen. And I want no room for that because even if it's not audible or it's not bothering the person that's recording, I don't want it showing up on the screen. So basically this track right here is recording from the same signal, but it's just going out to a random two tracks. So I'm not sending it out to the master. You see how this track goes to the master? That means I'm basically bypassing any chance of latency or plugins or anything. It's recording, it has nothing on the track. There's no autotune, there's no nothing. I'm not listening to it, I'm not monitoring with it at all. I record with this track, that has a little bit of EQ, uh, Pro DS, which is the Fab Filter DSer, R Compressor, which yes is Waves, and then a Puig Tech, uh, Jack Joseph Puig little EQ situation at the end. This is what I'm rocking on my tracking track. Those are the settings to uh, this male wideband. Sometimes I'll pull the threshold a little bit. And sometimes I'll change it if depending who's singing. But same with everything. Everything's liable to change when someone's singing. But these are the general plugins and the general settings I'm starting with in my template. I'm always letting someone hear themselves on here with the effects. And you'll notice there's already a little bit of reverb. I have a short reverb, a long reverb, a super long reverb. These are all additions that used to not be uh, part of my old chain. And then the normal... Uh, Fourth delay, eighth delay, sixteenth delay, slap delay, half delay, and that's it. So I don't use a doubler. I used to have a doubler in my old uh, chain. That's gone. These are all Echo Boy, as you'll see now. So the settings are the same for every single one, but they just vary in uh, the subdivision. So I'm using Echo Boy. I'm not having to use an EQ after my delay is the way I used to because sometimes I just work with the high and the low cut on that Sound Toys plugin. Uh, the super long reverb that I'm using now is Valhalla Vintage Classic. I just like the way it's been sounding on vocals. And then, yeah, I have a shorter version, which is my long reverb. And then my short reverb is Pro R. And this is a pretty weird setting on Pro R, but I like it. Vocal backings bright is the preset, and I edited it a little bit. I just changed a few things. So there's my preset, but that's what all these are right here. This is the short reverb, the long reverb, the super long reverb, delay, 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 and delay. All different types. So basically, I'll record with them listening to this track. They can listen to themselves with reverb or with delay or with auto-tune or with whatever they want to hear while they're recording. And then this is the audio that I'll take. So if I track someone, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to take this piece off of the, the no latency track and then I'm going to put it right there, boom, into the main group. So this group, as always, I have a group of a bunch of different tracks that have nothing on them, and then the chain is on the group of all the tracks. So there isn't anything on any of these, but this group right here has the plugin chain, same thing that's on the tracking stuff, maybe a little bit of variance in some of the settings or the EQ curve, 
this changes all the time. I usually change it pretty much right away whenever someone gets in there, depending on what their vocal sounds like. But the, the chain is on the group. You know the rules. I've told you about how I do this before. This is how you get down in Ableton before there was comping. Now there's comping. It makes your life easy. All you have to do is hit Option Command U and you can see every single thing that you've recorded. But basically, if I need auto-tune, I'll put that on these tracks separately. But unless I'm using auto-tune, anything that I want to be on any of the main vocals, I just put on the group. And I drag the no latency track that has no effects and nothing on it down to a track that has the same effects as what they were hearing in their headphones. So even though I'm using audio from a track that isn't going to the master bus, isn't going through any effects or anything, no one ever hears it. It has zero latency. And the first thing I play someone is say I record them, boom, 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 we're recording. And they go, let me hear what I just did. I take that right off the no latency track. I, play, I put it on the group and then I play them back the thing from the group and they're hearing themselves with absolutely no latency through all the same effects or sometimes even better effects. With certain, with certain parts of a vocal like backgrounds or ad libs, I'll put a little bit more auto-tune uh, or a little bit more retune speed on the backgrounds. So whenever someone sings something, they're kind of pushing for it a little harder and then I put it on the track that they're listening to it from and it sounds perfect and they go oh my god it sounds amazing okay let's keep going so sometimes when i drag down uh whatever i'm doing over here i have a little bit more reverb or a little bit more effects or a couple more things going on with my main group than i do with my tracking track because i want there to be zero as little latency as possible but when i drag it down sometimes it sounds a little bit better sometimes the eq curve is a little bit more figured out. When someone hears themselves back, they love how it sounds. And whenever they hear themselves singing, they feel like they gotta work for it a little more. So it's kind of psychological warfare, but I think it's healthy overall. Um, what else? You see the EQ curve on that. You saw what these settings are. Male wideband is where I'm starting. Same kind of setting with the compressor, same kind of setting with the little fake Poltec. And then I have the ad lib thing right here where you put ad libs. I have a track that's panned right, a track that's panned left, and a phone filter track, which actually usually I like in the middle. It just has a little phone filter on it, um, which is useful for a lot of stuff, especially whenever you have like a rap ad lib. There's like, say you have two takes of rap ad libs and you want to put them every other right left right left or have one whole take of them on the right one whole take of them on the left if you want a certain ad lib to stick out that's in between the main vocal put it in the phone filter track sometimes it sticks out a little more cuts through a little more but that's just me so i have the ad lib group i drag down ad libs into there if i need more i'm doing stacks of harmonies i'll just uh, copy and paste these and then i'll change the panning so maybe make them 50 and 50 maybe do another copy and paste and make them 30 and then 30 left and right and then now I can do one harmony here one harmony here one harmony here two of each boom big panned vocal stacks sound great again nothing on any of the tracks in the group the vocal chain is on the group and then a new part of my chain that I'm using now is this little effects group so this effects group is something that I'll do for basically a delay that I want to be really, really in front and kind of like a big vocal effect. So I'll drag, let's say the last word of somebody's sentence right here. If they say do, 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 and that's the last word, I'll take the do right there and I'll bring it down to this effects track. And then this effects track, the a lot of high end is cut out. It's not a beautiful EQ curve right now. It could be a little smoother, but a lot of high end is cut out on the EQ and then I have this Echo Boy setting over here that is very similar to the ones I'm using in my sends, but I have it on the track very loud and then it kind of has that high end cut off and I'll just use it to uh, accentuate certain delays and stuff. And sometimes I'll change the subdivision of it, but I'll put some like usually reverb or like the long reverb right here on, on the send two or send three. I'll put like long reverb on it and then duck it even quieter than the ad libs. But I'll use 
certain tales of uh, of words and stuff. That's pretty much it. 2022 vocal chain.